What's up, Nightwalkers? Today, I've got these five different dual PVS-14 bridge mounts to show you, and they're all very affordable, being under $1,000 each. Right here, we've got the Asgard Defense Systems, dual monocular bridge, integrated components, D14, Gen 2, integrated components, D14, lightweight, TMVC, non-powered bridge mount, and the TMVC powered bridge mount. I'm a big fan of running dual PVS-14s, and the reason's pretty simple. Most of us, myself included, your first device is going to be a PVS-14. And when you decide to go to duals, it's a lot less expensive to get a second 14 and a bridge assembly than it is to buy a true binocular night vision device. Plus, each device is truly independent on its own, so they're easy to separate. You know, if you, want, if you need to share them with friends or whatever you're going to do, where you need to have these separated. Plus, when the time comes, when you want to sell one of them, or even both of them, you know, to fund another device or whatever it is you're doing, it's a lot easier to sell these independently than it would be to sell one true binocular night vision device. Now, a lot of people have asked me which bridge mounts to go with, and I've always referred back to the ones we own. And that would be the Integrated Components D14, the uh, TVC non-powered bridge mount, and the night vision devices S mount. Now, I don't have the night vision devices S mount on display here, and that's because they don't make it anymore. So I don't wanna show something that you can't buy. Uh, but because I've only had two mounts to really show uh, people and refer back to, this led me to make this video and get my hands on some other dual mounts so I can give you a good comparison of the different ones out there. And I wanted to find ones that were affordable. And to me, affordable is under $1,000 because most people that are dual mounting PVS-14s, you know, they're trying to stay within a certain budget. Um, otherwise, they would just spend the money on a true binocular night vision device. I have to give a big thank you to Mod Armory and TMVC for supplying these mounts for this video. Now I'm gonna cover the Asgard by itself. And I'm gonna cover the D14s together because they share the same design. And I'm gonna cover the NPBM and the PBM together for the same reason. The Asgard is different than all the other ones here in the sense of the 14s, they don't articulate at all. What the Asgard does have is it has this arm that you can move and it adjusts the 14s in and out for your eye spacing. And so once your 14s are set for your eyes, you're basically just gonna stow it when it's not in use and then deploy it back down when you are using it. Very similar to how an Anvis goggle works. And you can get it with a dovetail like this one, or you can get it with the bayonet horn interface, depending on what you need. And you can also use other devices like the MUM or the GT14 that have quick rail interfaces with them. And so that's a pretty cool feature to these as well. And uh, these little holes right here, I assume those are for attaching, uh, you know, bungee points, attachment points to it. So you could put more tension against your helmet. And it's, you know, it's very well built. It's uh, machined from aerospace aluminum. And, uh, you know, it's definitely pretty sturdy. I don't see this thing, you know, breaking anytime soon. Another thing to add about the Asgard is that it's made right here in the USA. The Asgard weighs five and a half ounces. Now let's see how much it weighs with the 14s attached. So here's how it looks with the 14s attached to it. As you can see, it kind of looks similar to an Anvis type goggle. Now let's see how much it weighs. 27 ounces. I've been using this D14 for a few years now, and when I contacted Mod Armory to get the lightweight version for this video, they informed me that this is actually the Gen 1. And quite some time ago, they actually produced this Gen 2, which replaced the Gen 1. And after comparing the two side by side, um, I now know why I've had some issues before getting my 14s to line up with my eyes. And the differences I, I noticed are these little stubs here on the sides. Uh, these are raised up a bit higher on the Gen 2 versus the Gen 1. And the Gen 1, uh, this one circle right here is a bit smaller than it is on the Gen 2. And so what this does is on the 14th housing, you know, you got the screw that goes into the housing. And you got these two little uh, pieces right here that that engages with like your J-arm to, to shut it off when you flip it up and down. Uh, but anyways, these stubs go into those little recessed um, spots and that just locks it in place. So it keeps it straight with your eyes. And so that's definitely something I noticed um, on the Gen 2 that improved that dramatically compared to the Gen 1. And the other differences are, is the Gen 1 has the release buttons here on the side. And what this does is, is this releases each 14 from the bridge. Whereas on the Gen 2, you have these levers in the front. And these levers in the front being in line like this, uh, you have way less of a chance of accidentally depressing it. Uh, plus it makes it a lot easier. So when you're holding your 14 and you need to remove it, it just pops off easier versus trying to manipulate the button on the side. Um, the other thing to it as well is on the Gen 1, uh, the screws that went into the housing, um, you had to use a quarter or something like that to do it. Whereas on the Gen 2, uh, you have these little, these little tabs on the sides and that helps tighten them down as well. 
and you can still put a quarter or something in here to tighten it down even further and then the other differences are on the sides here uh, where the where these dovetails go in you know over time these are going to get kind of worn out and you might have issues where you get a bit of play inside here uh, but these set screws allow you to tighten it up and so that that eliminates any wobble you might get over time and over use of uh, just wearing these things down a really cool thing about the d14 is that you can swap out these arms with an arm that mod armory sells for a FLIR breech thermal monocular device and what that really allows you to do is have a thermal head mounted spotter in addition to your pvs 14 and so you can switch back and forth as needed so you can spot with your thermal and then go back to night vision as you need to um, now the images aren't going to fuse together you know they just don't go together very well like that um, but it does give you the, the, the choice where on the fly you can switch back and forth between night vision and thermal since it connects to the PVS-14 housing, just using the single arm here with this one attachment point, it leaves the front of the 14 open. So you can stick something like this D-lock weapon mount onto the objective lock ring on your PVS-14. And what that lets you do is basically take it from your head, take it off, and then just quickly stick it onto your gun just like that. But besides using something like a weapon mount on your PVS-14 when you're using the D-14 mount, you could use a Cody, which is a clip-on thermal imager that goes on the same way. Now the D14 lightweight, as you can see, it's pretty similar to the standard D14, but by ditching these, uh, you know, QD attachment points here with these dovetails for the arms, you know, not only does it minimize the size of it, but it reduces quite a bit of weight as well. And because you don't have the, uh, these dovetail assemblies here on the sides, you know, these can sometimes come up here and make contact with your mount. Uh, since it doesn't have it, it, it really allows the arms to go a lot further than they can on the standard D14. So that's pretty slick for getting these to lay down really nice and tight on your helmet. Here's the D14 lightweight mounted up on a helmet. It's on an L4 G24. Now, like I mentioned, because you don't have the quick release uh, part of the bridge right here with the arms on it, when you stow it, it really lays down the flattest out of the bunch here. Both D14s allow you to tighten up the swivel points here on the bridge. And so that's very useful. So over time, if this thing gets loose, you can just tighten it up as needed. These are very well made. They're machined from aluminum, and best of all, they're made right here in the USA. So let's see how much both of these D14s weigh. Standard D14, 4.3 ounces, and the lightweight D14, 2.4 ounces. D14 Gen 2 with the 14s mounted up, 25.8 ounces. D14 lightweight with the devices mounted up, you're talking 23.9 ounces. I've had the TVC non-powered bridge mount, NPBM, for about a month now, and I've been using it nightly, and I really enjoy this mount quite a bit. You know, these rings do an excellent job of locating the PVS-14 straight with your eyes, so you get very good image alignment. Um, plus, it's very lightweight. So I wasn't at all surprised when I got my hands on this PBM powered bridge mount. Because it uses the same rings, you get the same excellent image alignment to it. Uh, what the PBM does do that's excellent is it has this AA battery compartment built into the housing which holds one AA battery and then you have a power knob here and what this power knob does with these inserts you know inserted here inside the battery compartments on each pvs 14 is it controls the power so you can turn on the pvs 14s both of them at the same time just using this one switch and so that's a really cool feature the pbm and npbm are made of delrin and 6061 aluminum both made right here in the usa now on the hinge there's no way to tighten up the hinge um, but as you can see, I mean, both of them are super stiff. So I think it would take quite a bit of use uh, over time for this thing to loosen up at all. TMVC made the PBM for departments and units that have a large fleet of PVS-14s. And so this allows them for a minimal increase in cost of just buying the bridge mount to take two of those 14s and put them on the bridge to have a binocular night vision type of a device. And so having the battery compartment here, um, that allows you to run both 14s off of the same power supply uh, but in, in addition to that, there's a port on the back of the bridge um, housing here where you could take a remote battery pack cable and plug it into it to even have more extended runtime, as well as take some weight off of the bridge. Once you get the battery inserts installed into the 14s, the battery cap that's now hanging loose, you know, this threaded end allows you to secure them to the end of it. Uh, so that way you don't have to worry about, you know, cutting this off and then potentially losing these battery caps down the road. And as you can see, it sticks out a little bit further from the optics themselves. Uh, but you definitely don't notice it under use. And in fact, this doesn't obstruct its use whatsoever. You just got to be mindful that you got a little bit more sticking out here so you don't smack it on something.
So here's the PBM all mounted up on an L4G24 on the helmet. Now the screw on the left eye arm, it does stick up a little bit, so it does interfere with the mount slightly. Uh, but as you can see, it still goes up really high. In fact, I don't know why you need to go much higher than that. And when it stows up on the helmet, it still lays up nice and flat. Non-powered bridge mount, you're looking at three ounces. Now I actually weighed this before without these bungee pieces on, and it didn't change the weight, it was still at three ounces. A 14 is installed, you're looking at 24.4 ounces. Powered bridge mount comes in at 5.6 ounces. With the 14s mounted up on the scale, you're looking at 27 ounces. Now I didn't have the batteries installed in my 14s and that's mainly because I'm outside here in sunlight and because I'm swapping the 14s back and forth between all these bridge mounts, I didn't want to accidentally turn on a 14 and then burn up a tube in the sunlight. Um, but what I, what I run are these Energizer Lithium AA's and these things weigh half an ounce each. So you just need to factor that in. So here's the weights with the batteries installed into each PBS 14 and mounted up to each bridge mount. Now on paper, the weights look kind of high, but I can tell you that when you're wearing them on the helmet with the counterweight on the back, it's really not that bad. With these awesome bridge mounts, this really is the best time to run dual PVS 14s. You have lots of options to choose from. You know, each one of these mounts fits its own user group and they all have their own unique feature sets. The Asgard, I think, is perfect for someone who doesn't care about articulating goggles and where eye spacing is very important to them. Um, I can see a user who's got a lot of time behind Anvis goggles really liking this bridge mount. Um, and it's very minimalistic in terms of there's not a lot of things to mess around with. You know, once you got the 14s mounted up and you got your eyes set, you're basically going to stow them or you're going to have them down in deployment for use. The D14 is perfect for somebody that wants QD functionality as well as the ability to mount a flare breech thermal monocular with the PVS-14 on a bridge, uh, in addition to the ability to mount a Cody or a weapon mount to the front of the PVS-14. The D14 lightweight is perfect for somebody that doesn't want QD functionality and they just want something lightweight that offers tons of articulation. The non-powered bridge mount is great for somebody that wants lightweight with excellent image alignment. The powered bridge mount is excellent for somebody that wants a bridge mount that's going to give them the closest thing to a true binocular night vision device, as well as a remote battery pack capability. All of these are excellent, and most importantly, they're all under a thousand bucks. You can't go wrong if you pick the one that fits your needs the most, and thanks for watching.